Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I am here today with an Adobe Illustrator tutorial going over the Pathfinder tools. I am not going to go over all of the tools today. I am going to go over the ones that I use the most and the ones that I think will apply most frequently in your designs. And without further ado, let's get started. So what I did is I created two squares on my screen just so that I can replicate exactly what's going on on these icons and show you exactly how these tools work. And the first tool that we're going to start with over here is the Unite tool. Just a reminder, if you can't see this Pathfinder menu, you, you can go up into the window menu, you can go all the way down here to Pathfinder, and you can highlight that menu. So if it's not showing, we're going to go down here and we're just going to say it's going to be showing. So now we're going to have this here. And again, these are all individual islands, so these can be rearranged. They can actually be moved out if you don't want them in here anymore. You can dock them back there in the middle, just like that. They're very customizable. Same with everything over here on this side. So the UI is very user-friendly. It looks like it's a lot, but it is not as intimidating as it seems. Now that we have these two squares, I'm gonna walk you through how I created them so that you can follow along with me. What I did is I activated the rectangle tool by hitting M as in Mary on my keyboard, or you can go over here into the rectangle tool. If you don't see the rectangle tool, you can press down on any of the tools that you see in this menu because these get hidden. These are our shape tools and these get hidden inside of here. So you can either right click on the icon right here to get the menu to expand out. And to know that there is a menu buried in here is this tiny little triangle at the bottom lets you know that this is a menu that you can expand. So again, you can just left click and press down or you can right click and it'll open right up and you can highlight the tool that you need. The letters to the right of these tools are your hotkey shortcuts. So when I said that you could grab the rectangle tool by hitting M as in Mary on your keyboard, that's what you'll see right here. And I use the hotkeys a lot. So when you're following along with me, you will always hear me tell you how to get to it with the hotkey if there is one, and also how to get to it in the menu if there isn't one, or both ways. So back into what we were just doing, we're going to create one of these squares by highlighting the rectangle tool or M, and you're either going to click anywhere on your artboard once to enter the dimensions manually, or you can click and drag to create a square. And since this is called the rectangle tool, what it does is clicking and dragging will create a rectangle, holding down shift on your keyboard will make it into a square. Same applies with the circle tool, which is actually called the ellipse tool. When you're using the ellipse tool, it will create an oval if you hold down. So let me just show you. If you're using the ellipse tool, it's L, L as in Larry on your keyboard. Or again, you can right click here and click the ellipse tool. This is your oval and then holding down shift, there's your circle. So a lot of these shape tools work the same exact way. Holding down shift will make sure that it scales proportionately. And we're gonna go back to our squares now. So now that we have these two squares created, I am just going to show you how overlapping them and using these tools works. So what we'll start with is the Unite option, which is the first one over here, top left under Pathfinder. It says Unite, option click to create a compound path and add to the shape area. So at any point using the Pathfinder tools, if you want to create a compound shape while using these tools, you can hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard and it will create a compound shape. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna be clicking the button. I'm not doing Option click, so you don't have to worry about doing that along with me but if you want to try that that's an option out there so again first one we're going to unite and by uniting what we're going to do is select both of these together you'll also hear this being referred to as being welded together in the laser world all the same thing you're basically uniting the two of these designs into one so right now if you're looking at this it's one square on the left one square on the right if you go into outline mode which is command or control y on your keyboard or you can go up into the view menu and go into outline again your hotkeys are on the right so this is command y because i'm using a mac so command y will switch over into outline mode which is showing you still i have two squares now i'm going to stay in outline mode for this so that you can see what happens because for the unite tool you're going to see that this inside shape disappears so let's click that and you'll see that this then becomes one shape. And if I go back into preview mode, you'll notice that it is now just one solid shape that was once the shape of two squares is now been merged into one. And that's how the Unite tool works. We're going to undo what we just did. We're going to hit Command or Control Z as in zebra or Zariba if you're my son. You're going to go undo 
and we're going to go back into preview mode, command or control Y, and now we have our regular squares back. And now we can move on to the next one on the menu, which is minus front. The minus front tool or the minus back tool are used often when you're creating offsets. So I'm going to show you how these work, and both of these work almost the same exact way, except it's based on the placement of how you have your objects. So right now on my artboard, I'm going to click on this once. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to arrange and I'm going to bring to front with this left square. So now we know that this is the front square. This is the back square. So if you're looking at this, I'm going to color this in so you can see it a little bit better. So let's change this to blue. If you're looking at this is the front square, this is the back square, when I move this blue over, the blue is going to disappear because you're going to see the black in front. Okay, so we'll leave that like this just so you can kind of see what's going on with this tool. We're going to be using the minus front tool right here, which says minus front, option click to create a compound shape. That's the same across the board for all of these. Again, we're not option clicking. We're just going to select both of these, and I'm going to go over here and hit minus front. Now, again, this is in front, so it's going to do a cookie cutter stamp into the blue. So what it did is it took that top square over the blue square and it cut that out. And if we look at it in outline mode, all you have left is just the cutout shape of what was left of that black square stamping into that blue square. I'm going to undo this. And now I'm going to quickly show you how minus back works. So if you have both of these selected, this is the minus back. We're going to click minus back. And what's going to happen is it's going to take the blue square out of the black square because the blue square was in the back. So we'll do that one more time. Now I'm going to take the blue square and I'm going to bring it into the front. So I'm going to do arrange, bring to front. I'm going to select both of these together and now I'm going to do minus front. And if you see it worked like the minus back did last time because the blue was in the back. Now you can undo these and then select this and it'll select the top left. So now you see how that works. Again, they work almost exactly the same. It's just a matter of the placement of your objects. Here's another trick with this tool and it's very important. So this happens to me often when I'm creating circles for attaching earring hardware or keychain hardware, I create two circles. So I use the red stroke because it's going to be a cut pit. So I create a circle that is 0.22. So I already have that in there. And then I create another circle that is 0.08. We're going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to select these together. I'm going to center them and I'm going to change them from stroke to fill by hitting shift X. So now we have one that is an outline circle. So this right now is just two circles. One circle here, another circle in the center. I don't have them grouped at all. But when I create these, I do a knockout. So I do a minus front. But if you don't have, so right now what you would want to have is this tiny circle in front of this back circle. So I'm just going to, for error purposes, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to arrange and I'm going to send it all the way to the back. Now, as far as this design is concerned, this circle is on top. This circle is on bottom. So if I go and I try and stamp this circle out of this circle, it's not possible and it's going to tell you that. So I'm going to highlight these together and I'm going to hit minus front over here and you're going to get an error that says the filter produced no results. Please select two intersecting paths because right now these two don't intersect according to the design because the little circle is in the back. For this one, you can do minus back. So you can go over here, click that, and then it will make it into one design that you can then drag around. And this is just a compound path. So if you ever need to undo that, you can always just right click, release your compound path, or you can go over into the quick actions and hit release. But if you ever see that error come up, it's because there is no object on top of each other that it can actually intersect. You have to either switch the order of those objects or use a different tool. Next, we're going to go over the intersect and the exclude tools. So I'm going to once again, bring these over here. I'm going to color this one back to black. So we're going to use the eyedropper tool. While we're in this tutorial, I'll show you as many tools as possible. Let's use the eyedropper tool to get this back to black. So while this is highlighted with the selection tool, which is this little arrow up here, or V as in Victor on your keyboard, you're going to make sure this is selected. You can then hit I on your keyboard. I was going to say I for eyedropper, but it's not E for eyedropper. It's I, so you're going to hit I on your keyboard. And then you're going to just click once in this area, almost like you're picking up a drop of this color. 
and then it'll make sure that it will color that in. Keep in mind when you're using the eyedropper tool, it actually picks up your stroke and your fill. So if for some reason this had a black stroke and a black fill, it would apply the black stroke and the black fill to this shape as well. It always copies the exact formatting of the shape that you're picking up. Now that we have those colored into one, we're going to select them both together and we're going to go over here and we're going to intersect. What the intersect does is it grabs the center. So if you see this icon, how it has the two squares and then it has the white out shape in the middle, it's going to grab just that shape in the middle. So if you look on here, it's only going to keep this center rectangle. One more time. So it keeps that center rectangle. And then the exclude button, which is directly next to it, does the opposite. So when you have these both selected, the exclude is going to get rid of this in the middle. And it also merges these into one group when you make these designs. So you can select this and you can either right click ungroup or you can hit command or control shift G as in group and it will ungroup the design. So we're going to ungroup this and then you'll be able to see that you can drag these apart. So now they're their own respective paths. Now we have one more tool that I wanna go over because I use this one often, which is the divide tool. And this is what I use a lot to divide shapes. So cutting circles in half or trimming things at an angle with the line tool works out perfectly. So let's get back to our regular squares, Command Z or Control Z. And we're back where we started. And now we're going to go over our last tool for the day, the divide tool. Like I said, there are other tools in this menu. We've already gone over this one. I don't use the rest of these, so I will not be showing them to you. You can also research this on the Illustrator website if you want to dive into them more. But I have found that I use these the most. So these are the ones that we're going to stick with today just to reduce overwhelm. So let's get started with our very last one, the divide tool. And for this one, I'm not going to be using two squares. So we're going to get rid of this square. I'm going to do a circle and we're going to do the circle as a line. And then I'm going to use the line tool as well. So the line tool is up here again in the same area that you found the other tools. You're going to right click or press down on that button. You're going to pick the line segment tool or you can actually hit the backslash key, which is the slash above the enter or the return key on your keyboard. So now that we have that selected, what this does is it creates a line and it also works as the other shape tools work. If you hold down your shift key, it will create a straight line at a specific angle. And I believe for this one, it's at every 15 degrees. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's, yeah, it looks like every 15 degrees, 27, no, more than that, whatever. You see, you get the point. So it will do this or you can let go of shift and then you have free reign of this. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of my circle here. And if you can see, I have the smart guides turned on. So when I'm hovering over, once I hit center, it, it highlights it with a hot pink guide. If you don't have your smart guides on, you can go up into your view menu. You can go down to smart guides or you can hit command or control U on your keyboard to turn them on or off. They are super helpful. So I always recommend keeping them on. You can turn them off if they get on your nurse, but I promise you they probably won't. Now we're going to draw a line straight down the center. And in order to do that, we're going to hold down the shift key. So we're going to be holding down shift. We're going to click and drag all the way down and we're going to let go. So now we have a line down the center of this circle. And what I'm going to do is I want to cut this circle in half. I want to create a half circle. So we're going to select these two together and we're going to go over here and we're going to hit divide. And what divide is going to do is it's going to trim off the top of this along with the top of this. It's going to get rid of these two lines and it will create that circle in half. So then you can ungroup it and split it. So let's hit divide. So now the top line is gone, the bottom line is gone, the circle has been split into two halves, and right now these are grouped together. So you're either going to want to come over here and click ungroup, you're going to right click and pick ungroup, or you're going to do command shift G to ungroup, and then you can select one of these individually and pull it apart. So now you have two half circles. So that is the Pathfinder menu. In a nutshell, again, I didn't go over all of the tools because I don't think going over every single one of them is necessary, but feel free to dive in here when you have free time and play around with them and let me know what you think. 
And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.